On Larry King Now, trailblazing transgender teen Jazz Jennings. As soon as I could express myself, I knew I was a girl. I gravitated towards Barbies, dolls, dresses, everything feminine. And, you know, with the love and support of my family, I was able to thrive and be the girl that you see here today. It's really hard sometimes, especially online. People are saying these things like, burn in hell, you're a boy, why are you even living your life as a girl? It's just stupidity. You know, when I see those comments, it kind of just motivates me to continue sharing my story. I'm like, okay, if you don't get it, then I guess I have to keep putting myself out there. I would kind of have like a heartfelt moment with him, look in his eyes and say, you know, I'm here speaking on behalf of the transgender youth. Why do you have to treat us this way? We are just kids and we just want to be happy and we deserve to be treated equally and respected for who we are. Plus, how did you deal with discrimination? I just fought with two fists. Nobody messes with my kid. If the school had a problem, I went into the school, I brought in doctors, I brought in attorneys, I brought in specialists. Like, I wasn't going to let anybody tell my kid she was somebody that she wasn't. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Jazz Jennings, the 16-year-old YouTube blogger, activist, public speaker, and television personality. Jazz is one of the youngest ever publicly documented people to identify as transgender and has since become a national figure for LGBT activism and advancement. She's been named to Time Magazine's 25 Most Influential Teens, Huffington Post's Fearless Teens list, and is the recipient of the Colin Higgins Youth Courage Award. Jazz, along with her parents, co-founded the Trans Kids Purple Rainbow Foundation, which aims to assist transgender youth. We'll talk about that later. The third season of her hit TLC show, I Am Jazz, premieres June 27 at 9 p.m. And later, we'll be joined by Jazz's mother, Jeanette, I am Jazz. Why did you come up with this show? Why was it important to make it? Well, um, we, we knew that transgender youth in society weren't fully accepted, and transgender people in general face a lot of hate and intolerance, so we just wanted to normalize what I'm going through as a transgender teenager to show people that I'm just a regular teenage girl who goes through normal teenage problems, and, you know, it's okay to be transgender. Just live your life authentically, be yourself, and be proud of who you are, so... Do we know the, how many transgender youth, usually with transgenders, and I've interviewed quite a few, they're adults. Yeah, but there are many transgender youth out there, and I feel like our voices aren't often heard, and that's why a lot of people don't see these transgender youth. But more and more are coming out and stepping out of the shadows, and I feel like we need to be there to place protections and to allow these youth to thrive rather than, you know, suppress them. What do we see in season three? In season three, you'll see my bond grow with my family and me hanging out with my friends. But most of all, it focuses on the bottom surgery, which is now a big part of my life. And it kind of explores the different problems that I go through with that. You'll see in the season that I go like on consultations with doctors and it's a fun journey. I say I'm on the search for America's next top vagina. <laughs> Are you f worried about it? I mean, Obviously, is it a dangerous surgery? There, with any procedure, there are complications. So, I mean, I think my mom's more worried than I am. But for the most part, I'm just excited. I feel like this is the last step to complete who I am as a person. And, you know, I know I'm a girl, but this kind of just confirms that. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready. What type of reception have you gotten for I Am Jazz? What, um, what's been the approach of people? We have had a lot of positive feedback. A lot of people have said that they didn't know what it meant to be transgender prior to watching the show, but after seeing my family's story, they were able to realize, oh, transgender people are just like everyone else. They are people too. And also transgender individuals, transgender youth in particular, have said that the show has guided them down the right path through their own journey. And I'm glad that we could kind of be an example of you know, what it means to be transgender. What was your name as a boy? Um, my birth name was Jaron, J-A-R-O-N. When did Jaron know he was different? As soon as I could express myself, I knew I was a girl. I was two years old, walking around and telling my mom that I was a girl, I was a girl. And I gravitated towards Barbies, dolls, dresses, everything feminine. And, you know, with the love and support of my family, I was able to thrive and be the girl that you see here today. As a teenager, were you attracted to boys? Um, this is 
interesting because I consider myself as pansexual, which means that I don't necessarily have a preference when it comes to attraction in terms of gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. I just love people for their soul and who they are, so I'm really attracted to everyone if when you have you a had, personality. When you had these feelings and you had the male genetics, gender, what was it like? It was really hard for me because I... I was so young at the time, but I knew that I was different. I wouldn't want to leave the house in boy clothes. I knew that this wasn't who I truly was on the inside. And, you know, society didn't fully understand how could this child be transgender? How could this child know that they're a girl? But I persevered and I kept insisting that I was feminine, that I was a girl, and I wanted to live my life as who I am, so. Brothers and sisters? Uh, yes, I'm the youngest of four. So I have two brothers, they're twins and they're 19, and then I have a sister, she's 21. And the two brothers are male, and the sister is female. Yes. How did you, you're the youngest. Yes. How did your parents respond to your telling them this? So when they first saw what I was going through and struggling with my gender identity, they were confused. They thought I was going through a phase that I would grow out of it and that I would eventually, you know, revert back to boyish things. But when I was so persistent in my actions and in stating that I was a girl, they knew that this wasn't a phase and that they had to just love and support me. So um, when I was three years old, they took me to a specialist and I was diagnosed with what's now called gender dysphoria. And from that moment on, they just knew they had to follow my lead, listen to what I had to say and ensure that I was happiness by providing me, that I was happy by providing me unconditional love. Face a lot of discrimination? Yeah, I definitely have. You know, people aren't fully accepting and they don't really understand what it means to be transgender. And this could cause, you know, comments of hatred and cruelty to emerge. And it's really hard sometimes, especially online, people are saying these things like, burn in hell, you're a boy, why are you even living your life as a girl? It's just stupidity. Yeah, and I think people are just ignorant. And, you know, when I see those comments, it kind of just motivates me to continue sharing my story. I'm like, okay, if you don't get it, then I guess I have to keep putting myself out there. When you went to first grade, were you a boy? Um, so basically I officially transitioned when I was five years old and um, I was going to kindergarten at a new school so basically we thought it would be like a fresh start. So they didn't know? Um, at the kindergarten no one knew but I was pretty open about my story especially since uh, when I was six years old I appeared on 2020 with Barbara Walters so it was very public knowledge at that point so people knew and yeah. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, our, I, yeah, I always just lived in my truth. No matter what. Our guest is Jazz Jennings. After the break, we'll talk about the fight for LGBT rights, maybe a little politics, and later we'll be joined by Jazz's mother, Jeanette. Stay with us. We're back with Jazz Jennings. I Am Jazz premieres June 27th at 9 Eastern, its third season. Your day-to-day -day life, does it ever have obstacles? Um, definitely. You know, being transgender, it's a challenge in and of itself. Um, every day on social media, I receive hate comments, people who say terrible things, or in person, people just will say things to my face, like, you're a boy or you're a freak. And, you know, every day it can be a struggle, but I, I think I have a pretty thick skin and I have the love and support of my family. I'm lucky, so therefore I've been able to move past it and just stay strong. Why do you read those things? Um, I try not to read the comments at all. That's our number one rule in my family. Don't read the comments. But every now and then, it just kind of pops up and, you know, yeah. Well, the statement is it. you've come a long way, baby, and certainly LGBT has come a long way. Yeah. Are you surprised at how fast, it's seemingly fast, it's becoming generally accepted? I'm really happy that people are really opening up their minds and seeing that LGBTQ individuals are just like everyone else. We are all people down to the core and we should realize that despite our differences, we are all the same and we should just embrace those unique qualities and kind of unite as a society and really love one another. What do doctors say? Is it a chemical? Is it a chromosome? What is it um, physically? So. There's been different theories and stuff like that, but some people say that it could be um, basically something that happens in the womb that causes someone to be transgender. But honestly, 
it doesn't even matter to me all that scientific stuff. I know I'm I was biologically born male, but it doesn't really matter because on the inside I knew I was a girl and being a girl makes me happy and it's just who I am. So might as well just let me let me live that way. You run into other teens? Do you know other teens that are LGBT? Yeah, I have a lot of friends who are teenagers who are, are LGBTQ or are Including transgender. Girls who become boys. Yeah. Ever a moment you regretted coming out? Um, I've never regretted coming out, not at all. I mean, this is just who I am as a person, and I'm so lucky that I was able to transition early and have the love and support of my family, and, you know, there's no regrets. Why would I look back? You know, have you ever had a regret and looked back and thought you should have been a girl like me? No, yeah, I never exactly. thought that. I never thought I should have been a boy. Mostly because of high heels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a struggle. President Trump, when originally North Carolina had that problem with LGBT in bathrooms, said he had no problem with it and that in any of his hotels, any gender could use any bathroom anytime they want, and he has since changed his tune. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Well, yeah, he didn't really keep that promise. He rescinded Obama's directive, and that was something that greatly affected my community, specifically, you know, transgender youth, because without that protection in school, we are vulnerable. And I feel like the school environment is somewhere where we should be able to thrive and not have to worry about simple things like the bathroom, but it creates this unsafe environment and makes it so much more difficult. And I think by staying strong as a community, we could hopefully move past this. You go to ladies' room at school? Of course I do. No one questions it? Nope. If you had the chance to meet with President Trump, what would you say to him? Oh my God, I would say so many different things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think most of all, I would, I would kind of have like a heartfelt moment with him, look in his eyes and say, you know, I'm here speaking on behalf of the transgender youth. Why do you have to treat us this way? We are just kids and we just want to be happy and we deserve to be treated equally and respected for who we are. So since you've had it and you have the show and you've come, do you encourage other people going through this difficult time to come out? I think that it's important that we let our voices be heard. You know, hiding in the shadows isn't going to get us anywhere. I want everyone to be able to be proud of who they are and to love themselves and share that love and pride with the community beyond them. Obviously, there are safety obstacles for some people, and then other individuals don't have the support of their family or parents and, you know, could potentially be kicked out of their homes. So it's really, really difficult, and I think we need to look closely at those struggles and try to support those people more and more, but instead we're focusing on other things. Do you know other prominent people like Caitlyn Jenner? Do you know her? I've met Caitlyn before, yeah. Does it make you feel good to know that Things are changing so ra appears rapidly. Yeah, I'm glad that, you know, I think after Caitlyn Jenner came out with her story that almost everyone knew what it meant to be transgender. Almost everyone knew what that word was. And I think it created more, you know, visibility for our community and showed that we exist and that we want equality and change to happen. After the break, we'll be joined by Jazz's mother, Jeanette. The show is I Am Jazz, it's on TLC. Don't click away. Jazz Jennings is our guest. I Am Jazz, into its third season. We're now joined by her mother, Jeanette Jennings. Do you get involved in her show? Uh, yes, I do. I do a pretty good mom, don't I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where do you shoot the show? Right in our hometown in South Florida. Okay, take us back. You have three other children, mm -hmm. two twin boys, yep. and a daughter. Older. Yes. They're both boys are boys and the girl is They're a girl. They're cisgendered. That's what they Gender. call it. Okay. Cisgendered. What happened when, how did she approach this with you? Um, she came out, I always say, singing Ethel Merman tunes. Like, hey, I'm here and I'm jazz and At I'm what a age? girl. Um, as soon as she could verbalize and she spoke very young, like she would even crawl towards girly things. When she could speak, she would say, I want dolls, I want dress up, I want everything that's girly. Like, never acted like a boy. And extremely feminine. I said, okay, we're gonna have a gay kid here because she was um, Is that what feminine. you thought you had a gay kid? I thought at first, okay. Your husband too? Yeah, we said, well, well Jazz is probably gonna be gay. What about the siblings? Um, they were so little, they didn't really understand. They just were like, well, how come he's not acting like a boy? Mm -hmm. Like, because that's the way he wants to be. If he wants to act like a girl, just let it be. But he was still a he. Yes, back then a he. When did you 
know that he wanted to be a she, really? Um, I think Jazz mentioned it when we took her to a professional at the age of three, and they confirmed what I already thought that she was transgender at that point. A professional mm -hmm. what? Um, doctor, psychologist who had a lot of experience in this area and said, you know what, I truly believe your child is transgender, but I can't help her because I don't treat children. I've never seen a three-year-old who's transgender. But at least we were validated and knew that, you know, this wasn't a phase, because at first we thought it was a phase. And uh, Were you totally yeah. open to it? I just wanted her to be happy. And I saw a child suffering, uh, not being able to express herself as who she really was. And um, if this would make her happy, that's what I wanted for her. When I read the suicide um, attempt rates, being so high, like close to 50%. I'm like, I'm not gonna play Russian roulette with my child's life. I'm gonna do what's best for her. What about your husband? Um, he's the same as me. Took him a little longer, but like maybe a month longer, but um, he's very open-minded and very accepting. How about the siblings? They are too, I guess it's just family. Like they just love jazz and that's their little sister. And the oldest one, she was a little bit hesitant at first because she was like, I'm the only girl, I'm the princess. And then we explained how serious this was and she's like, okay, I'm gonna love her forever. You close with your sister? Yeah, I'm super close with my sister. How about aunts, uncles, relatives? Um, in the beginning, I have to say, not everybody was open to it. It was harder for some than others. Right now, it's been you know, so long since she's transitioned that everybody's on board now. But in the beginning, the pronouns, some people weren't ready to switch over completely. It took a few years. How did you deal with discrimination? Um, I just fought with two fists. Nobody messes with my kid. If the school had a problem, I went into the school, I brought in doctors, I brought in attorneys, I brought in specialists. Like, I wasn't gonna let anybody tell my kid she was somebody that she wasn't. She said you worried about her possibly having the operation. Yeah. Because? I mean, you know, what parent doesn't worry about their kid having major surgery? I mean, this is, you know, she's going under the knife for a long period of time and there's no turning back. I mean, this is serious. You think so she's gonna do it? I know she's going to, yeah. <laughs> a few years ago I wasn't sure, but now I know. Are you as disturbed by our current president as she is? I would say so. I don't get into politics too much, but I'm not very happy with what I've seen right now. Now, what do you both think of this? Discrimination in the community. Do you think it's rapidly changing? Um, I thought for a long time we were making a lot of progress, and then, you know, with the change in administration, things definitely were push back a little bit, but I feel like the more and more we stay strong and stay connected as the LGBTQ community, that we could help, you know, prevent this discrimination from occurring and we could put the positive message out there. Were you apprehensive about your daughter going this public? Um, yes, initially. It took a long time for us to come to terms with it. We didn't want to do it. When she was six, she was invited to go on with Barbara Walters, and we were like, no, we're not doing this. And then after a few months of realizing that nobody was going to speak out about this, we, we felt it was the time. Did you support her doing this show? Yes. Um, if she didn't want to do it, we wouldn't have done it. What's the Trans Kids Purple Rainbow Foundation? Uh, that's our foundation where we raise money to help uh, transgender children that are suffering and we use the money to go to good causes like we put together a whole yearly party for transgender kids from all over the country in Canada. So we just want to put smiles on faces of kids that are discriminated more than anybody else. How do people get more information about it? Um, you could visit the website transkidspurplerainbow.org and also just you know look us up. We have a Facebook page as well. and. Yeah. It's Trans Kids Purple, Purple Rainbow, Rainbow Foundation. Mm -hmm. When you started this and you started hearing from people, were you surprised at how many there were? I was. Like when we came out, we didn't know of many other people with little kids. And right after we came out, all these support groups started popping up online and they all had little ones like Jazz. I'm like, oh, geez, we're not alone. We're not the only ones with a transgender kindergartner. Like it, it felt good to know that there's others in the same boat. You have transgender friends? Um, yeah, I definitely have a lot of transgender friends. There are many... Really? A lot? Yeah, I do have a lot. I've met many people over the years at different conferences, and, you know, I they're all so amazing. You know, we're just kids, and we just want to live our lives, and when we're with each other, we have this commonality, and we understand one another at a different level, and it's really cool. Everyone at school know it? Um, I think everyone at school pretty much knows that I'm transgender. How do boys treat you? Um, it's definitely an interesting situation because a lot of guys don't really talk to me because I'm transgender. I 
don't have any experience dating really and I don't do that stuff that much. I mean, I've only done like a little, a little bit, but little bit. yeah, at school people kind of avoid me. Any jokes? What do you mean jokes? Do people make jokes about Yes, people do make jokes about me. Um, when I was younger, there were rumors spread and people called me chick with a dick and stuff like that, so. How did you handle that? I went to the school, complained. Um, made a big stink about it and you know parents were brought in and um, I just wanted to protect her when she was in elementary school she wasn't allowed to use the bathroom for five years um, Do you ever wish you in. weren't a girl? <laughs> no I'm super proud to be a girl you know this is just who I am and you know I I'm proud of the fact that I'm transgender I wouldn't change it for the world because if I wasn't transgender I wouldn't be sitting here right now sharing my story being the strong person that I am today and it's made me a confident person and a person with pride and I'm proud to be a part of this movement and to just be myself and allow other people to be themselves as well. In our final moments the one and only Jazz Jennings takes your questions we'll check in with social media next. The third season of I Am Jazz will premiere June 27th, 9 Eastern on TLC. Her mother has departed because she thinks all the questions should go to her daughter from social media, as indeed they do. Aaron Jay on the Larry King Now blog. It's, it's LGBT Pride Month across America. How are you participating? Um, I've been doing a lot for Pride Month. We have been going to different community events and Actually, a few days ago, we were just at a different uh, festival, and there's been pride parades and everything, so it's been really fun. On Nancy S. on the Larry King Now blog, on this, on this season of I Am Jazz, you were interviewed by conservative host Tommy Lauren. What was that like? It was tense, definitely. You know, I felt like I was walking into enemy territory. Oh, and is it was, she very conservative? Yeah, she's oh, very... Oh, is she young, too? Uh, she's pretty young. She's in her early 20s, I would say, and it was a scary situation. Cause Where is she, her show done? Um, In Dallas, but I think it got canceled now, so I don't know, but... So what happened? So basically... Um, I did an interview with her and she's known for her very like aggressive approach to talking about these issues and you know you'll have to see on the show but you know what I'm not going to reveal any spoilers. You show it on your show? Yes it's on I Am Jazz. Did you uh, argue? Well you must have had some sort of. Um, there is definitely tension and disputes but. You think you might have changed her mind? Um, I don't know if I was fully able to change her mind, but you'll have to see. Okay. Demon Hutch on Twitter, what advice has helped you the most so far in life? Um, I think, you know, the advice provided to me by my family, they have told me that it's all about unconditional love. And I feel like that's helped me the most because it shows me that you just really have to love who you are as a person and then share that love with other people and the world beyond you. Jan Vexo on Facebook, how are you liking fame? Um, honestly, I would definitely consider myself as like a private person and well, I- Oh, you chose to go public. Yeah, and I don't like attention that much really, so it's, it's hard for me to, you know, be in the spotlight and have the cameras in my face, but I always say that if it can benefit other people, then I'm willing to share my story. Demon Hutch on Twitter, how do you deflect bullying? Um, honestly, I just don't let it get to me. I, I don't care what people think about me. If you're gonna judge me without fully understanding the content of my character, then who are you to say these negative things? So their opinion doesn't matter, and honestly, it just motivates me because it shows that there's still ignorance present in our world. Hurt, is it painful emotionally? Um, not necessarily because, you know, these people, they don't know me, so why am I gonna take their opinion to heart, you know. I get more affected when people that do know me and who I care about say something negative about me, but that doesn't happen that much, though. Corey Anderson on the Larry King Now blog, what's the biggest misconception about transgender people that you hear? Oh, there are so many different misconceptions that people have. I think one of the biggest ones that I hear is, how did you know that you were transgender? You were too young to make that decision because, you know, as soon as I could express myself, I was two years old saying, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, and people don't think that two-year-olds even have concepts of gender, but that's not true because little kids, they gravitate towards feminine things or boyish things, and, you know, it's not like I transitioned right at that moment. We waited and saw that it wasn't a phase. So, I mean, 
And I, I think another misconception is also that it wasn't a choice. A lot of people think I decided one day that I wanted to be a girl, but it wasn't really like that. It was, I, I was a girl right from the start. I was born this way, so. Very different from the homosexual. Yes. The, the gay man who I've interviewed many times, I've interviewed a, a sergeant who won the silver medal, mm -hmm. silver star in World War, in the Korean War. He was homosexual, like men, but never thought he wanted to be a girl. Yeah, because gender identity and sexual orientation are two completely different things. Gender identity is who you want to be, and sexual orientation is who you like. Cheryl Swift on the Larry King Now blog. When you go to college, what will be your major? Oh, my God. I haven't even thought about that. I honestly have no idea what I want to be when I get older, so I'm just going with it. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um... What do you want to do? You have to have some thought about it. I really have no idea. I know that I just want to do what makes me happy. I like being creative and doing artistic things, so probably something like that. But I, I definitely, definitely think I'll continue sharing my story. You know, I always say that I'm going to put my message out there for as long as it's needed. And, you know, right now I definitely think our voices need to be heard as the transgender community. And I'm going to continue sharing my story to create positive change. Would you like to marry and be a parent? One day, yeah. Right now wow. I'm 16, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz, great meeting you. You too. Big thanks to my guest Jazz Jennings and earlier to her mother Jeanette. Be sure to tune in to the two-night third season premiere of I Am Jazz starting on June 27th at 9 p.m. Eastern. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time.